What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy, Goblin, and today I'm coming in with a video that's gonna piss everybody off. In today's video, we're creating a tier list of all of the weed brands that I find important. Now, there's some brands that are missing from this list that I haven't put on here because I either haven't tried them or they only do one thing. I avoided putting brands that specifically do only carts or only pre-rolls or only one thing because this list would go go on forever, and among those brands, there's not a ton that separates them. So everything on this list is a brand that does multiple things, whether they do concentrate and flower, or they do pre-rolls and vapes, whatever it may be, they've got a few different products on the shelf. And this is also going to only discuss legal dispensary brands. And the reason for that is because if we started getting into black market brands, I feel that they have somewhat of an unfair advantage. They don't have to go through a lot of the regulations. They don't pay the same taxes. They can get a little more wild with their methods. You know, they have a lot more wiggle room. So we're going to do a separate video for black market brands. But this today is the official dispensary weed brand tier list so i hope you guys enjoy drop a like if you do and also these ranks that you see on screen are not the ranks this is just you know before we get going before we get going you know i just i just placed them here for convenience okay so without further ado let's dive right into it actually there is further ado $50 zips back in stock on only gas. You know where to find them. All right, let's dive into it. All right, so let's take a look at the contenders in today's tier list. We have, starting from the top here, okay, we have Heavy Hitters, True Leaf, Cure Leaf, Fig Farms, Cresco, Trilogy 710, Rosin Tech Labs, Mountain Man Melts, Lowell Herb Co., LA Family Farms, Dank Vapes. Yes, they are actually a legal dispensary brand now. We'll talk more about that later. Kalia, Josh Wax, Punch Extracts, West Coast Cure, Super Dope, Seed Junkie, Raw Garden, Papa Select, No-Till Kings, Maven, Kush Company, Muha Meds, they are also a legal dispensary brand now, no I'm not kidding, Doja, Cam, Bear Labs, Stizzy, Cookies, Blueprint, Green Dog, Zodix, Jungle Boys, Backpack Boys, we're almost there guys, bear with me, 710 Labs, Alien Labs, CBX, and last but not least, Ted's Buds down here in the bottom right corner. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the dispensary brand tier list. I have a feeling I'm going to be getting fewer care packages after I make this video, but name of the game, baby. All right, listen, let's pull out a, a brand. Let's see. Oh, where do we start? You know what? We're going to talk about Sea Junkie. Let's start off and talk about Sea Junkie. Just pull them right out of the middle. So, listen. Sea Junkie is a brand that, you know, they have a lot of history. They're, they're, I would call them, you know, somewhat legacy. They're very OG. They're, they're well known in the game and their genetics really have changed the game. Like Sea Junkie deserves their flowers, but we're primarily talking about the weed. We're talking about the product on the shelf today. And that's the heaviest, heaviest weight on the ranking here. And I do have to pay homage to what they've done for the industry and the history that they have. Big ups to everyone over at Sea Junkie. But I will say that their flower isn't really the best you can get. However, they price it very accordingly. I've gone to the dispensary and I've seen Sea Junkie 8s for like 30 bucks. And I think in that price point, you're getting a really great buy most of the time. I've never smoked a bag of Sea Junkie that I thought was garbage, for sure. I, I don't think I've ever gotten a bad bag of Sea Junkie. I just don't think I've also gotten a bag that I can recall that really, really stuck with me for a long time. I think if, if you're trying to buy on the, the kind of middle of the, the pricing tier list, Sea Junkie's a very safe bet. They have good stuff, they price it accordingly, and they've got history. You know, it's some legit people over at Sea Junkie. I'm going to throw Sea Junkie an upper B. I don't quite think they deserve A. I think their product would have to be a little bit more enjoyable for me, but... You gotta respect the history, and they price it really accordingly. It's it's really fair. If you're looking for like a thirty dollar eight, Sea Junkie's gonna get you right. Okay. Next up on this list, I'm gonna start moving some of the stuff that's like down here so it, it gets less confusing. Or should I just turn these off? Actually. All right, I've turned off everything to make this list a little easier to comprehend and separate what's already ranked and what isn't. So next up, we're gonna talk about LA Family Farms. LA Family Farms is a California dispensary brand. They primarily do concentrates, but they also have hash holes. 
I'm not sh I don't think they do flour. At least I've never seen it. But from what I've smoked out of these guys, they're killing it. Their, their hash is really solid. They have some great fucking rosin on dispensary shelves. And their hash holes are actually pretty good. Now... Hash holes have recently become a very big trend in the dispensary market, especially here in California. The problem with that is that a lot of the brands that are jumping on the hash hole in the infused joint wave are putting absolute garbage in these pre-rolls so they could sell it for the best price because a lot of consumers just want the best deal and they don't really consider much beyond that. LA Family Farms has been doing hash holes for a long time. I would say probably longer than most of these other brands. And they put out good dispensary hash holes, which is very rare. I think there's only one other, maybe two other brands that have good hash holes in the dispensary. And the rest of them are a joke. LA Family Farms, I think, really deserve some respect. And in terms of dispensary brands, they're one of the top. I don't think you can really go wrong. Now, I don't think they're necessarily elite tier, but I got a lot of love for LA Family Farms. I really do. I'm debating on putting them in S. However, I will say the one thing is I find that they haven't really changed up their, their genetic offering lately. I, I find myself seeing a lot of the, the same LA Family Farms strains on the shelf, which is not a bad thing if they've got them dialed in, but... I got ADHD, bro. I like variety. I want to smoke a new bag or a new puck every day. That's how I am. If they had a little more variety in their lineup, I would maybe throw them an S. And we could even be potentially having an elite conversation. But for now, I think they belong comfortably in high A. Very high A. Like, definitely separated from some of the other A-tier contenders that might be coming up. All right. We've talked about L.A. Family Farms. Let's go next up on the list. Ooh, this is going to be a fun one. Lowell Herb Co. Now, this is a brand that is in a few different states. I know they're in Illinois now. They're a California brand, and this is effectively boomer weed, okay? This is, is the ultimate finesse weed ever. These guys market and claim that their farm has existed since, like, 1906 or some shit. However, it was discovered, I believe, back in 2017, that that's not actually true at all. That's not true at all. The company was made in 2017. They do this whole marketing gimmick of, like, oh, we have this OG farm. Like, no, bro. Unc Lowell was not growing weed in 1906. Shut the hell up. But... The bigger thing here is this is just textbook finesse boomer weed. These guys put absolute bunk in pre-rolls. They sell 0.35 gram pre-rolls to old people that don't know any better. The target audience for this brand is the people like your unk who hasn't smoked since the fucking 80s and he comes back and anything over 3% THC sends him into a psychosis. That's what this company is going for. I have very little respect for what they do. I'm going to be honest. I don't fuck with Lowell. I think they be ooh. Are we having a booth conversation? We might be having booth talk right now. We might be having booth talk. I mean, listen, bro, I smoked their pre-rolls in Illinois out of desperation because the Illinois market at the time that I lived there was poverty. And I believe it still is, but it's gotten a little better. But Lowell, even there, was trash. Here it sucks. I've smoked the Lowells here in California. It's a joke. This is, oh my god, it, it's genuinely weed for people that don't know any better. Like, the moment you learn, you educate a little bit about what to look for on a shelf, this is one of the first brands you avoid. They're going in booth. I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you. They're going in booth. I've never smoked a good Lowell product. I don't like their style of marketing. They, they just reek of corporate MSO. Like, you go to their website and their executives are dudes who are working in, like, food brands. I don't want to fucking hear it, dude. These guys aren't for the culture, all right? Booth conversation, absolutely. Go down there. You belong there. All right, next up, let's see. All right, let's talk about Doja. Doja is a brand that I assume most of you watching this video know, even if you've never actually bought it from a shelf. And the reason for that is because Doja does a ton of international work. They are popping over in Europe and the UK. Doja is a big deal, and I gotta give my flowers here too, kind of like I did with Seed Junkie. Doja puts in a ton of work, and it's just spreading the good word of getting fried, spreading the good word of California weed. They do a ton of bringing people together, hosting events, and I love that. I think that's what this community and that's what this industry should be all about. And Doja is a perfect embodiment of that. These guys are for the culture, and I love it. However, like I said earlier, 
we're talking about weed primarily today, and I got to give my flowers for that, but let's cut to the chase. Is Doja the best weed on the shelf? No. Is it close to it? Sometimes. However, I think Doja's somewhat hit or miss. They have some really OG genetics and strains that they've been putting out for years and years that they have locked in, but sometimes they just do miss, you know? I will admit that I enjoy Doja, but I don't enjoy it every time. But I gotta show love for what they do for the culture, and it's still gas, you know? Like, is Doja bad weed? No. Can you go to a dispensary and buy an eighth of Doja and be confident that you're gonna have a good smoke? Yes. And for that reason, I think Doja belongs in A. I think their weed is slightly better than Sea Junkie, for example, but the pricing tiers make that a little more muddy because Doja is generally a bit more expensive from what I've seen than Sea Junkie. Now, Doja is still not going to be like your $80 eighth pre-tax, you know, but it's, it's a little more up there, I would say. But I gotta, I gotta show love. I gotta show love. I, I got a lot of respect for Doja. They have good products. Big ups to them. All right. Next up on this list, let's talk about it. Oh, buddy. Oh, baby boy. Okay. We got a spicy one here. 710 Labs. I have a take on this brand that might be a bit controversial, okay? Everybody knows 710 Labs for their concentrates. They know them for their, their rosin. They know them for their pods. Everyone knows 710 for their concentrate. I mean, it's in the name. 710 Labs. Oil Labs. You know what I'm saying? But... In my opinion, I actually think their flower for the past, like, year or so has just been knocking their fucking concentrates out of the water. Their flower has been incredible lately. I've heard rumors behind the scenes that they got some new people or a new person or someone on the grow team, and whoever that is or whoever they are, I just gotta say... Hats off to you, because I've been smoking a ton of your weed, and you've been crushing it. Whoever you are, you deserve all my respect. The Starburst 36 flower is some of the greatest flower I've ever smoked in my life, and in last year's, you know, the, the Weed Awards video, I ranked the Starburst as some of my favorite smoke of the year overall absolutely unforgettable. It is incredible. There are other strains. The Randy Watson, they have a great Skittles cut. The 710 flower has been remarkable lately. Genuinely, some of the best, if not the best flower that you can go get off a dispensary shelf. They have just been crushing it, dude. And I'm not just talking about the Percy flower that you get off their list or the private orders either. I'm talking like the stuff they have in the dispensaries. It's just been great lately. They've been popping off. However... I do have a bit of a criticism, and I hate to say this because I like 710. Please don't crucify me for this. But I think that their concentrates have gone slightly downhill. I've noticed that lately I, I, you know, I feel like I used to be able to go to the dispensary and grab any puck of 710 and just have a great experience. Be like, wow, this is some fire. This is some good shit. And maybe this is uh, also a consequence of my, my taste evolving, you know, meeting more brands, you know, learning more about the industry and finding more great top shelf stuff. But I feel like nowadays I have to be slightly more picky with their concentrates as to what I'm going to grab. I have to really think like, well, did I enjoy this last time? Is this going to be good? And I feel like that's not how it always was. Their concentrates are still great and better than 98% of the other stuff on the shelf, but... They used to be better than 99.9% .9 of the stuff on the shelf. And for that, I'm going to put them in high S. Very high S. I don't quite think they get elite, honestly. I think if they dialed in, if they lock back in the concentrates, you know, for example, some of their lower tier concentrates, I think have gotten a little bit worse. They have a tier system, right? So tier 1's their highest, tier 4's their lowest, and I feel like their tier 4's used to really smoke heavy, and lately I feel like some of their T4's and T3's haven't been as fantastic. The T1's are still great, but if they could just bring it together a little bit more, you'd be an elite, baby. 710, I got a lot of respect for y'all. Keep crushing it on the flower, and if we were talking only flower here, this 100% elite, 100% elite. Big up, 710, keep crushing it, let's move along. All right. Next up, Ted's Buds. Let's talk a little bit about Ted's Buds. So, these guys have had quite a few strains that have stuck with my memory for a long time. In particular, the Ted's Buds duck sauce is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. 
Ted's Buds also does a ton of collabs. So it's, I, I don't want to say it's it's very hard to rank their stuff, but you have to factor that in. They're doing a lot of collabs, so there's a lot of variety and quality with Ted's Buds. I don't want to say that I've ever bought a bag off Ted's that was bullshit, but I've definitely grabbed a bag where I was like, yeah, you know, that's just some, just some gelato, you know, no big deal. But they're duck sauce, they're spoiled tuna belly, I, they have these like these fish and almost like like Asian cuisine named strains. They have this little like branch of, of those type of strains going on, and they're all fantastic. The duck sauce I highly recommend to anyone watching this video. The spoiled tuna belly is another good one, but I think that they put out a lot of the strains or a lot of strains that kind of smoke the same. In my experience, I've bought a lot of Ted's Buds bags. They're typically one of the most expensive brands on the shelf. I mean, Ted's Buds, you're depending on the bag you grab, you're going to be looking at like a $70, $80, 8 Then also depending on what dispo you go to. You can find them for $50, $60, but I mean, you walk in a backpack, boys, yeah, buddy, that's 80 bucks off the shelf, you know? But I got to give my flowers for their good strains. I think Ted's Buds deserves A. I think they deserve A. If we were just talking the duck sauce here, my dude, that's ass, but... The other stuff that they put out kind of muddies it a little bit, and I think they comfortably sit in A. All right, so next up on this list, we're going to talk about a brand called Zotix. Now, Zotix is a brand that I'm going to be honest, at first glance, I kind of brushed off, you know? They have the hype Mylar bag marketing. I mean, the name, they got Za in the name. I'm going to be honest, when I first saw them, I kind of figured this is just going to be another brand that's repacking a bunch of different lemon cherry gelatos. And... I was wrong. I was wrong. I don't remember exactly what event it was, but I went to an event, I, I think it was a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago by now, one or two years, and I bumped into the guys at Zotix, and they handed me a couple bags for free to try out, which they're very cool people over at Zotix. Whenever I see them at events, they always just show love. They're really good people, but they gave me two bags in particular that really stuck out to me. They have a grape guava, and they have a blue guava. And the Blue Guava not only has won awards, I think it even won the entire event that night, but it's won my award as well. The Blue Guava's fantastic. It has these crazy, like, fruity terps that are just absolutely incredible. Zotix is a brand that I regret sleeping on when I first saw them on the shelf. I wish that I had grabbed more of their bags sooner. They really do put out some fi, and it's really tough to find a brand that is putting out gas in the Mylar bags like that. You know, a lot of the time, you see the Mylars and you think, man, that, it's just going to be some hype weed. But dude, don't sleep on Zotix. I really, really suggest next time you guys are at a dispensary, you see them on the shelf, in particular that blue guava. Dude, smoke that shit. I mean, it, it, it is good, bro. I have never smoked a bag from Zotix that didn't get me fried as fuck. Like, I, I'm not even just like, oh, okay, I never smoked a bag that was bad. Like, no, every bag that I've smoked from Zotix got me cooked. Even the strains that weren't my favorite still got me high as fuck. I have very good things to say about Zotix. I got a lot of respect for him. I'm going to throw him, ooh, oh, fuck, dude. See, this is tough. This is tough because I, I want to put them S, but, but when I think overall, I enjoyed Ted's Bud's duck sauce more than Zotix, but I think Zotix has more consistent heat than Ted's Bud's. So no, actually, yeah, I think S is fair. I think S is fair. I think S is where Zotix belongs. Zotix, keep crushing it. I love the guava. I'm excited to see what else you guys got. Keep fucking doing it. Big ups to big ups to Zotix. All right. Next up. Oh, buddy. CBX. Cannabiotics. Now, listen. CBX does flour, and they also do concentrates, okay? Everyone really knows them for their flour, though. And I'm going to be honest. It, it pains me that they even have concentrates because... If they were only a flower brand, we would elite, like immediately elite, right? Instantly elite. Similar conversation to 710, except 710 has great concentrates still. They still have amazing concentrates. CBX concentrates, on the other hand, whether, whether it's, I believe they mainly do resin. I don't think they do a ton of rosin. I might be wrong, though. But the concentrates that I've had from them just don't really stack up in comparison to their flower. It's, it's very, you know... I'd say their flower is, is really in its own tier, you know, like other brands you would compare to CBX instead of vice versa, but their concentrates, on the other hand, are like stizzy tier, you know? I mean, it's not, 
it's it's not great. And it pains me that we have to consider everything in this list because I just want to slap them in elite so bad, solely off their flower, but I can't. I can't do that in good conscience because their concentrates bring them down a little bit. It's, it's unfortunate, but they do. I'm going to put them in A solely because I, I just don't like their concentrates, if I'm being blunt, you know? They're, I God, dude, CBX, please, bro, please. Just get rid of all the concentrates, put a bunch of flour on the shelves, elite tier, instantly, bang, boom, pow, all right? Immediate. I had to get a second clap in. That first one was a bitch clap. All right, CBX, dude, oh, man, I'm sad. I'm sad. I really wanted to place them in elite. Honestly, the more I think about it, guys, I think we have to go back and make a revision, though, because I think I was being too harsh on, on 710. As I'm talking about a few of these other brands, I'm realizing that, like, I don't think Zotix and 710 belong in the same tier. No disrespect to Zotix. Zotix is great. I, ju I just sucked them off for a minute straight, all right? But, like, I think I was a little harsh on 710, so we're, we're actually going to go ahead and put them up in Elite. I think, yeah, you know, they, like, no brand is perfect at the end of the day. No brand is perfect, but 710's very close to it. So you know what? I'm going to bump them up to Elite. I'm sorry, 710 Labs, for, for disrespecting you. Uh, we're going to put them up to Elite, okay? But still, my message stays the same. 710, hey, you crank up the concentrates again. You're like 99% there, but you, you were once that 100% there. Just get that extra 1% of juice in there. You're locked in, all right? Next up, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Let's see. What do we have? Oh, baby. Fig Farms. Let's talk about Fig Farms. This is a brand that I actually first tried when I lived in Illinois. They are also in Illinois. I think they're in a few other states. I don't know which ones, but they are mainly a California brand. They started in California. I mean, it's in the name, California Cannabis, right? Uh, so Fig Farms is, I don't know if I would directly say they're like a Lowell Herb Co. kind of brand, but they definitely do kind of market to the older, like, less concerned audience there's certain brands here that really go for specific market segments and fig farms definitely goes for like the older like you know the the businessman who just got off work and he stops at the dispo and grabs one eighth and it's gonna last him for the month you know fig farms is that kind of brand however their flowers not terrible i don't know if i'd really call it good though like it's just it's okay they're painfully average. I think they belong in C. Like, it's it's not incredible flower. It's not really bad. It, it's just their products are very whatever. But their stuff in Illinois fucking sucks, unfortunately. Um, that is the case with a lot of California brands that go to Illinois. And one particular big one that we're going to talk about later. But their Illinois stuff fucking sucks. And we can't just gauge it off California dispensary. So I think, honestly, we're going to put Fig and D. I think we're going to put Fig and D. If we were just talking Cali Weed, it would be C. But their Cali Weed is average, and their Illinois product just sucks. So, I mean, I, I think D is a fair place to put them. Next up, oh, buddy. Let's talk about heavy hitters. Okay. I think I'm going to piss a few people off with this one, but that's fine. Um, heavy hitters sucks. All right? They're, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. I'm not I'm not going to skip any, any, you know, formalities here. All right? Heavy hitters sucks. This was a brand that has not evolved for like 10 years straight. They are still selling distillate carts for $50 a pop for one grammars. They like, oh, oh, listen, a decade ago, we'd be having a different conversation, but they literally have not changed anything over the past 10 years and their prices haven't changed either if anything they've gotten higher these guys tax heavy hitters is a brand for the uneducated consumer okay they have the cool packaging they have the nice metal tips on the carts they have these premium feeling boxes but at the end of the day no matter what words they put around it they're still selling you disty okay uh heavy hitters i i don't have a lot of love for because i mean after tax like if I went and bought a one gram heavy hitters cart right now, I'm looking at the menu, $52 at this dispensary I'm looking at. Out the door, I don't know if that's before tax or after tax. We'll assume that's after tax, just for good faith. Fucking $52 for a gram of distillate? They're smoking dick, dude. This is E. I don't want to quite call them boof, but they're like E tier. And E's a weird tier, because it's like, bro, you're really straggling on boof, but you're not quite boof. You're a little better. 
but their pricing just blows them out of the window. Like, objectively, there's worse distillate on the market, but not for this price. Like, for this price, you shouldn't even be smoking Disty, period. And I, I believe they also, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they have live resin, too? I don't think they do any rosin, though. Let's see. Let's look it up right now. They also do pre-rolls, which, like, I don't, I don't really want to talk about. Okay, they do do rosin. I can't imagine how much those cost. I, I can't. I can't, I can't fuck, that's probably a hundred dollar gram, dude, <laughs> like, <laughs> these, they tax out the dick, I, heavy hitters, you're going to eat, I'm sorry, bro, I'm sorry, bro, all right, next up, ladies and gentlemen, ooh, we got a lot of fun stuff coming up, all right, let's talk about Calia. now, Calia is a brand that kind of goes against what I said in the beginning, you know, I was trying to avoid brands that mainly only do one thing, and Calia kind of only really does concentrate, but, they do it really, really, really well. Incredibly well. They have collabs with Alien Labs, where they use Alien Labs genetics to make their hash rosin, and they are incredible. But consistently, Calia is just for the culture. They're really nice people. At every event they show up to, they're always just handing stuff out, being kind, you know, showing love. They do a lot for the community, and their product is incredible. It's not just like, oh yeah, they're charitable, that makes me like them, but their product is absolutely fantastic. They offer me free stuff fairly often, and I still pay full price for it all the fucking time, happily. No question about it. They offer me free stuff and I don't accept it sometimes I, I do accept it a lot of the time but sometimes I don't hit them back because I want to pay for it I'm like nah you guys have hooked me up too much I feel bad this stuff is too good to be giving out for free I got love for Calia you know their, their product is phenomenal any of you guys who smoke their stuff drop a comment I'm sure you can agree their stuff is fan fucking tastic dude you guys belong up in elite Calia belongs up in elite I, I don't know if I'm saying it right Calia 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 I don't know, bro. Either way, the shit's gas. The shit's gas. I still got a couple pucks in my fridge right now. And shout out to their, their partner, I don't know, sister brand, Lil Bro brand, uh, Community Cannabis, which is like the, the budget version of Calia. Uses a lot of the same genetics. And honestly, that stuff is fine too. Calia's very expensive, but you're going to get what you pay for every time. And that's why they belong in Elite. All right. Next up, Punch Extracts. Oh, whoo. Okay. Oh, we have a fun combo to have here. All right. So listen, Punch, I will admit I like the the idea of what they're doing. They, they put out really cheap rosin for the average consumer, right? I mean, I'm talking they're, they're tier fours. They have a tier system similar to 710. Tier one being the best and tier four being like the, I don't want to say the worst, but I don't know, I guess not the best, the the not not the best tier. Um, I appreciate that they're putting out like $15, $20 pucks and stuff. That's cool. But Punch has arguably one of the worst hash hole offerings in any dispensary right now. They jumped straight onto the cheap hash hole train and just fucking pissed on it. They're They're called Punch Rockets. They're like... $25 or something, not even 30 bucks, and that's at, like, the expensive dispensaries, so if you found a cheap one, you could probably get this shit for, like, 19, 20 bucks, right? They are brutal. I have smoked a lot of the Punch Rockets. I've never smoked one that burned evenly. I've never smoked one that burned well. I've never smoked one that tasted like a true hash hole. The whole point of making a hash hole, and by the way, for those of you who don't know, a hash hole is when you roll a, a, a snake of concentrate in the middle of a joint. You know, it leaves a hole in the middle of the joint, hence why it's called a hash hole. And the entire point of doing that is to enhance the flavor. Yes, it gets you higher, but really mainly you're doing it because you want a better smoke. And some of the flavors you get out of a hash hole are incredible. Punch, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if they just don't try any of the pairings before they sell them, but it, their hash holes just taste bad. They just straight up taste bad. Now, their concentrates, you can find some good stuff. They have some occasional good stuff. I had one that was called, like, Horse Snacks a year or so ago that I really enjoyed. But generally, their stuff is is kind of mid, you know? I mean, they, they price accordingly, and I will give them flowers for that. But it's it's far from the best that you could be getting out of the dispensary. And also, their rosin carts aren't great either. They do cartridges as well, and they're just not... Not fantastic, but there's some of the cheaper ones you can get. So if you want bang for your buck, I don't know, maybe Punch is the one to go with. 
I think punch is comfortably C. I don't I don't think they really belong much higher than that. That's just my two cents, though. Fuck it. All right. Next up, folks. Ooh, we got a bunch of brands here. Okay, what are we going to click on? Uh, let's do Mountain Man. Mountain Man Melts. Okay. Listen. Mountain Man is a brand that primarily does concentrates. They do hash rosin, but they're kind of similar to Calia. I put them on here because they're so good. They are fantastic. Mountain Man is a brand that you can consistently get some really good stuff for a pretty fair price. In their price tier, they're fantastic. I don't really have a lot to say here because I'll just be rambling on about how good they are for the price tier. They belong in S. I, I really, I believe Mountain Man belongs in S, and that's just, that's where they stay. They have good stuff, they have good genetics, they have good flavors, they have good pricing. I don't really have anything negative to say about Mountain Man. They check the boxes for me. So, Big ups, Mountain Man. Keep killing it. You're going up to S. All right, let's see. Ooh, okay. All right, we got some fun brands here. Let's go a little lower on the list. Let's go a little lower. Oh, God. Okay. All right, open the floodgates. Here we go. Open the floodgates. There's about to be like 100 trappers trying to get their fucking packs off in my comments right now. Like, Goblin, dude, change the fucking rating, dude. I got to sell this P. All right, listen. This is like the culture brand, okay? They have done a ton internationally and domestically for just, just normalizing getting stoned, you know? They, they were really at the forefront of, like, just the weed market as a whole, you know? About a decade ago, cookies was that shit. 2016, 2015, bro, everybody was talking about that Gary Payton, right? But cookies... I believe, tried to expand too fast. They flew too close to the sun. And when they expanded outside of California and started going to other states as other states legalized, they kind of threw out the cookies license all willy-nilly. They gave licenses to brands that just were not qualified to grow cookies quality flour. And very quickly, their reputation for being the best on the shelf diminished hard. They are no longer anything close to the best on the shelf, unfortunately. And it's because they handed out their licenses to pretty much the lowest bidder in any state they expanded to. You see, when you're expanding to a new state, it's very costly and difficult. So licensing is not an uncommon thing. It's very common, actually. But cookies happen to pick some terrible-ass brands to grow their weed in other states. Illinois comes to the forefront of my mind in this. When Cookies first launched in Illinois, it was very shortly after weed was legalized recreationally in Illinois, and Cookies contracted out to a brand called Ozone. Ozone's parent company is, I believe they're called Ascend, Ascend Holding, something like that. And at the time, I don't know how they are still, because I, I refuse to smoke their stuff, but at the time, Ozone was quite literally the worst product you could get off the shelf in the entire state of Illinois. It was not even a close second. They were consistently boof after boof after boof, and they were charging $60 an eighth. And when cookies dropped in Illinois, I bought the bag without knowing who was actually contracting and growing their genetics. And when I found out it was ozone, it all made sense because the shit that I smoked from them in Illinois was consistent garbage. And Cookies knew it too, which is why they pulled the contract pretty quickly. I believe ozone only ever did like one, maybe two drops from them at that point. And then Cookies kind of disappeared off shelves in Illinois for a while. And then eventually, I believe now they're back around. Don't quote me. I don't, I don't live in Illinois anymore, but... Cookies really needs to have more discretion with who they give their license to. I'm not going to say any names outside of that one, but there's a few other states where there's some cookies license holders that I don't feel are quite qualified. But it's gotten to the point where they've been doing that for so long where it's like, well, is that just is that just what cookies is now? Like, is it just, you know, you're selling the, the name? You know, the, the name of Cookies was built up off good weed and being for the culture. And nowadays, it seems like they're using that name to sell midweed and still kind of do stuff for the culture. But, I mean, the best way to contribute to the culture is get us all high. And Cookies has not been doing a good job of that. I'm, I'm unfortunately going to put Cookies in C tier. Very, very disappointing showing out of them lately. I'm not a Cookies fan nowadays, I'm going to be honest. All right, next up on the list, we're going to talk about Trilogy. And Trilogy is a brand that... They have a, a gray market counterpart that I'm not going to name because I don't know how public they are about that. But 
This is effectively the dispensary version of a very popular and very high quality black market brand, okay? These guys mainly do the rosins, right? They do the concentrates, but they do them damn well. I think if you're going to a dispensary and you want to get concentrate, you got a few options to get the best. You're looking at Calia, you're looking at Trilogy, you're looking at 710, and maybe one other option on this list. If you want the absolute best of the best, maybe one that we haven't ranked yet. Mountain Man's another good contender, but Trilogy is just some fuego. Tw Trilogy is amazing. Like, if you know, you know, really, with Trilogy. That's that's just the way it is. They belong in Elite, and I don't have much more to say on them. It is what it is. All right, next up. Oh. 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 Okay. All right, we're going to talk about Cure Leaf. Listen, this is a, a big MSO. What MSO means is multi-state operator, okay? What that effectively means is they're like the Walmart of weed, okay? Not only do these sell god not only do these guys sell god awful weed in every state they operate in, but they actually actively lobby against rights for consumers like you and me. These guys are the devil. Cure Leaf are the scum of the industry. I have nothing but bad things to say about these people, and they're going straight to Booth without much further discussion. And their little buddy buddy over here, True Leaf, is on the same exact shit. I don't have much different to say from Cure Leaf and True Leaf. Same exact shit. True Leaf I smoked when I was in Florida, and it was absolutely brutal. Dry as bones, Boofington, okay? But. They have the funding to win the market, and that's what they're doing. True Leave is absolutely crushing it in the states they operate in, unfortunately. And maybe by making this video, I can encourage a few of you guys to buy literally anything else but True Leave and Cure Leaf. Absolute boofington, okay? All right, next up, we're going to talk about Maven. Oh, okay. All right. This one, uh, I don't know who this is going to upset, but it's got to be somebody. Um, Maven kind of has, like, heavy hitter syndrome, where they just tax out the dick for stuff that should not cost that much. Maven is really fucking expensive. Like, consistently really expensive. But their shit smokes like punch. Like, you, you could grab, like, a tier 4, tier 3 punch puck. And it's going to smoke kind of comparably to a good amount of the Maven offering, okay? Uh, I know a lot of people like Maven. I know maybe some people are going to call me an idiot for this opinion. But just remember that this is all my opinion and taste. You know, this is just personal taste. And personally, I think Maven just sucks. I have never, like... I've bought them off the shelf a few times. I've been disappointed every time. It's a brand where I'm at the point where, like, if I see Maven on the puck, I'm not even going to consider it. You know, like, I'm not... It's 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 just... I'm passing. I don't even want to look at it. I'm passing. Maven, I'm sorry. You're going D. I'm sorry, guys. It's just not it. It's just not it. All right, next up. Holy fuck, dude. Listen. Believe it or not, Dank Vapes is actually a legal and licensed dispensary brand in the state of California now. I'm sure many of you know Dank Vapes as like the ultimate fake cart brand. I remember back when I was in high school, Dank Vapes were going around like crazy, dude. These were some of the first like fake carts that started popping up on the internet that were egregiously fake. Not just like, oh, well, it's real packaging, but it looks kind of fake. Like, no, Dank Vapes had the most hilarious corny ass packaging ever and their product sucks, okay? The reason they're on this list is because they don't only do vapes nowadays. They also do in fused pre-rolls they're doing hash holes how do you think those are they don't sell flour they don't sell hash they're outsourcing both of it for as dirt cheap as possible and by the way outsourcing and white labeling is a very common practice in the industry and it's not necessarily a bad thing but in this example it's a very bad thing okay dank vapes just boofington all right absolutely brutal listen if you pull up to the function and pull out a dank vapes hash hole i might shoot you and i really mean that i'm gonna blick your ass down dank you're going down to boof i'm sorry dude i'm sorry dude and this isn't even considering their past reputation before they were legal i am solely factoring in what is on dispensary shelves today and it's terrible all right next up on the list ladies and gentlemen we're gonna talk about some josh wax now, Josh Wax is a very well-known brand out here in California. They got concentrates. I think they even have flour, too. Josh Wax does a lot of stuff. But, God, we got, we got to find a good brand for the next one soon. Okay, we're going to do a good brand next, all right? But Josh Wax um, 
kind of, once again, heavy hitter and Maven category where, like, their product is good-ish, but the prices are ludicrous. Like, these guys overpriced probably harder than any other brand in the entire state of California. Josh Wax is priced absurdly high, disgustingly high at any dispo you go to. Josh Wax is the tax. Josh Tax is really what this should be called. And Josh Tax is not a tax I'm willing to pay. I'm sorry, Josh. Send the IRS after me, okay? Josh Tax, I'm not paying that, all right? I'm sorry, dude. Uh, Josh Tax is unfortunately going to end up in DT. No. <sighs> Josh Wax's stuff is objectively better than Maven, so I want to put it C. But they're overpriced. Like, their pricing is worse than Maven, which makes them about even. They kind of cancel each other out there. So, yeah, yeah, Josh Wax, you're going to D. I'm sorry, dude. It's just, it's just not, it's just not it. All right, let's talk about a brand I like. Let's talk about a brand I like. Where were they? I wanted to, hold on, here we go. No-Till Kings. All right, let's talk about these guys. This is a brand that I wasn't really familiar with until recently. Uh, I saw them on a shelf. I'd never really seen them before. What caught my attention is they were doing some real OG genetics, like strains that I hadn't really seen anywhere else in a long time. I'm talking, these guys are doing like White Widow, Jack the Ripper, right? Some strains that you don't see a lot. But what really made me appreciate No-Till King is that not only do they do these old school strains, but they do them really well. A lot of these old school strains, you know, for example, when you think of like White Widow, you think of Blue Dream, a lot of people nowadays probably think of Boof because a lot of the brands that are putting out these genetics are just relying on the reputation of the strain to sell the weed. So they don't really care that much about how it's coming out. No-Till Kings has some really, really, really fantastic cuts of some OG genetics that, honestly, you would be hard-pressed to find better. If you're an old-school smoker who remembers smoking the good old White Widow and that kind of stuff, I highly encourage you to seek out a bag of No-Till Kings because you're probably really going to enjoy it. They have some amazing stuff. Absolutely great. I have a lot of a lot of praise to give No-Till Kings. I really like I love what they're doing, honestly. OG genetics, but bringing like quality to those genetics. I love it. They belong in S tier. And look, their logo even has an S. Like they're telling me where they belong. And I agree. You belong there. Great job, No-Till Kings. Keep crushing it. All right. Next up. All right, we gotta talk about another brand I like so I can be in a more positive vibe right now. Okay. Let's talk about Super Dope. Listen, super dope. Uh, you guys are probably familiar for them, uh, familiar with them for the hentai bags. They they have a lot of naked anime ladies on their bags. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw that, I was like, oh, bro, it's just it's hype marketing, you know. I, I kind of thought of it the same way I thought of Zotics. I, I will admit, I was like, oh, you know, it's gotta just be cool bags. Like, there's no way, you know, like why else would they do all that? But I was sorely mistaken. The Mega Z Dark is fantastic. The Mega Z Blue is fantastic. Their lemon poppers are great. I think their cherry and their bubble, uh, their bubble gum poppers are kind of whatever, but generally they have really good stuff. They just put out a Mega Z Emerald that I have yet to try, but I do look forward to trying that. Super Dope is awesome. They also are, are expanding. I remember they did some rosin kind of recently. I don't know if that's still available, but they did do concentrate. And that was, I mean, that was I, right. you know, I tried some of that. I don't know if that ever hit Dispo shelves, actually, now that I think about it. I don't know. Either way, they did experiment with some concentrates. I tried that and enjoyed it. Super Dope, I, I really like the brand. I like what they're doing. I, I think their combination of marketing and quality flower is really, really dope. Super Dope, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and throw Super Dope. Ooh. Honestly, I might put them in S. I think, yeah. I mean, I think Super Dope is a really, really solid bet. You know, if you're going to the dispo and you just want some good weed to smoke with the homies, that's a great pick right there. I do think that their cherry poppers and, and bubblegum popper strains are, are somewhat forgettable. But the Lemon and then all of their Mega Z cuts, except for Red. Red was kind of whatever. But their other Mega Z cuts are good. Right? Like, I, I got I got love for Super Dope, you know? Consistently good stuff. Cool marketing. They pull up to a lot of events. I got to throw them an S. I got to throw them an S. All right. Ladies and gents, next up. Oh, we got to... Oh, buddy. All right, Muha. Listen. Muha Meds is yet... An, they're kind of like Dank, okay? A brand that I'm sure most of you watching this video, when you think Muha Meds, you probably think fake cart, Okay? If I'm being honest, I have no clue why they didn't rebrand. Absolutely no idea. Because 
their current dispensary products aren't terrible. They're not good. I'm not going to say they're good. I might even make the argument that they're kind of bad, but they're not terrible. However, their existing reputation for the most part is terrible, right? And the products that they have out aren't really good enough to combat that. Muha honestly should just go for a rebrand. Like, I would have just started from scratch. They they do a lot of pens right now. Their stuff is just, eh. Like, it's whatever. I've tried their Dispo stuff. I'm not going to sit here and hate on it, but I'm not going to sit here and praise it either. It's not good. And that fact compiled, you know, or combined with, like, the, the existing reputation, just not a good situation. Honestly, I mean, I, I would have gone for a total rebrand if I were them. I think I'm going to put Muha in D, and the only reason I put them in D is because their product quality is kind of comparable to, like, I guess heavy hitters, lower tiers, but Muha's priced a little better. Muha isn't taxing. Heavy hitters is charging, like, Josh tax prices for fucking Cura Leaf quality, all right? And I've had enough of that, all right? Hey, sorry if you hear me sniffling. I'm very sick. Next up, Bear Labs. All right. So, wait, where the fuck did Bear Labs go? Wait, what? Wait. Wait, Bear Labs should... Wait, hold on. I have to find Bear Labs. Wait. Where the fuck actually is Bear Labs? Oh, they're under low... Oh, my God. Wait, stop hiding down there. Get out. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay. Bear Labs, motherfuckers. Listen, okay? They don't have the headiest product on the shelf. I I'm gonna cut to the chase. They don't have the headiest concentrates on the shelf. They primarily do concentrates. That's what they're known for. But, but... They're priced very accordingly very accordingly uh specifically at events they show up at events a lot and i mean they're selling like 30 40 dollar pucks which i got a lot of love for i think their product is generally good i don't think i could name a single one of their pucks off the top of my head that really stuck with my memory but that's also kind of a good thing because i smoke a ton and usually the bad stuff sticks with me a lot longer than the good stuff you know i remember like oh that was bad but Bear Labs, I've smoked a lot of, and I don't particularly remember a lot of their flavors. So, I'd put them in B. I'd put them in B. You know, like, they're good. They're not the best you can get. Before the price, I mean, you get what you pay for. It's good stuff. It's a good deal. All right. Next up. Let's go. Where are we going? Let's talk about Stizzy, dude. Oh, where the fuck? Oh, my God. Hold on. I need, I need to find Stizzy. Where is it? All right. I have found Stizzy. Here they are. We've discovered them. All right. So, let's talk a little bit about Stizzy. Now... I am solely going to talk about product here. A few of you guys might remember, I, I had somewhat of a public disagreement with them a few years ago, but I'm going to try not to let that factor into my rating here. In fact, I think try was the wrong word. I'm just not going to. We're solely going to talk about product here. And listen, I got to show my flowers to Stizzy for once again, kind of being like cookies where they really are a big part of the culture. I, I love the ads that they run. I love the events that they're a part of. I think they do a lot of cool stuff. But it seems like they're kind of trying to do everything, and in that, they're losing the sauce, okay? What I mean by that is Stizzy literally has a product in every category on the dispensary shelf. They have pre-rolls, they have flour, they have concentrates, they have vapes. I believe they're even doing edibles, and maybe edibles are the one thing they're not doing. I don't eat a lot of edibles, so, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're mainly talking about smokables here, and Stizzy has pretty much everything that you can imagine. The problem with that is that none of it is that great. Their flower in particular kind of sucks ass. No, I mean, not kind of. It, it does just suck. Their concentrates for the price tier are a little better, but, I mean, you can get, like, punch extracts in that price tier. You, you're even starting to get into Bear Labs for that price tier, which I think are generally better options. And their pens are, are just... They are what they are. I don't really think they've evolved that much. They recently did rosin pens, which I thought were pretty good. Um, but outside of their... I mean, the Stizzy 40s were good, too. The Stizzy 40s tasted good. But, like, generally, their flower and their standalone concentrates aren't fantastic. They're not. But they price fairly. And I do have to give credit for that. I mean... Would I rather go to the Dispo and spend $90 on Josh Tax or go to the Dispo and spend $25 on Stizzy and get the same quality? Probably Stizzy. You know, that might have been a bit of an exaggeration, but either way, you know? Same thing with Heavy Hitters, same thing with Maven. You know, I mean, I think if Stizzy was taxing more, we'd be lower here, but they price fairly. You get what you pay for. I think C is a pretty reasonable place to put Stizzy. 
All right. Next up on the list, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, we got Jungle Boys. All right. <sighs> Jungle Boys was that shit like six years ago. No, probably longer at this point. Probably no, I get yeah, I think no, six years ago is pretty accurate. Like twenty eighteen, yeah. So like six or seven years ago, Jungle Boys was that shit. Jungle Boys was very hype. Everyone was talking about them. Everyone was smoking them. They were a big, like, black market. You know, all the plugs wanted that Jungle Boys. People were filling up fake Jungle Boys bags, you know. But their product, I don't know what the deal is, has just taken a complete nosedive. At one point, Jungle Boys genuinely was some absolute flame. I'm talking, like, really, really gas. Now it is painfully mid painfully mid. I haven't smoked a good Jungle Boys bag, and I don't even fucking know how long. Like, they they are are not great nowadays. I'm putting Jungle Boys down a D, and there's not really much more to be said besides, like, it's just not it. It's just not it anymore, okay? All right, next up, West Coast Cure. All right, listen, this is a very OG brand. These guys got legacy, they got story, they go back, they have some fantastic genetics. You can see strains out of West Coast Cure that you're not going to see anywhere else. And in somewhat comparison to Stizzy, they price very accordingly, right? You're not going to get the top, top shelf, you know, fucking six-star hash out of West Coast Cure most of the time. Same with the flower, but... You are absolutely going to get a banger for what you pay for. Like, not just like, okay, it's fair. Like, I'd say they, they swing a big a bit above their price tier. I'm going to put West Coast Cure. Ooh. I don't know. We could be looking at low A or B here. I don't know. Another thing I got to add, too, is they do a ton of events and stuff for the community that I really have a lot of respect for. I mean, you you see this man, Jay Cure, is out there at concerts throwing out joints all the time, bro. These guys, are they, they really got love for the game. And I got a lot of love for West Coast Cure. I respect what they do. I enjoy their products. I, I'm going to put them in A. I think I'm going to put them in A. I got respect for West Coast Cure. Big ups. That's gang right there. All right, next up, let's get it cracking. Cresco. <sighs> Similar to, to Cure Leaf and True Leaf, this is another brand that is an MSO, extremely corporate, and also lobbies against the things that you like, okay? They don't like home growers, kind of like True Leaf and Cure Leaf. They don't want you to have the right to grow your own weed, okay? Uh, the other problem is Cresco products are expensive as hell. In the state of Illinois, it depends state by state. In Illinois, they're taxed, but that's because it's just Illinois. But pretty much every bag of Cresco I've tried has been painfully forgettable. And they kind of do, you know, they, they have similar legacy genetics to No-Till Kings, except they do them terribly. Like, these guys have Pineapple Express, for example, but they do it horribly. Give those fucking genetics to No-Till Kings, you stupid assholes, all right? I have had enough of Cresco. We're putting them in booth, and there's no further discussion, all right? If you work at Cresco, and I know there's a few people watching this that probably do because they hire 10 million people, sabotage it. Burn it down. Quit that shit. I've had enough, all right? Fuck Cresco. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Raw Garden. Uh, holy, listen, this is like a stoner litmus test, okay? This is a stoner litmus test. If you, add, like, if you go to the dispo with someone who you haven't really smoked with before and they grab Raw Garden off the shelf, you know you're not, like, that's not the guy you should be smoking with. That, that, that's, that's not going to be a good sash, okay? Raw Garden, ugh, it's just so painfully mid. Like, I have literally never smoked a product. They're in the same price tier as Stizzy. They definitely compete directly with Stizzy, but I think Stizzy just kind of does it a little better than Raw Garden. Raw Garden, I mean, just kind of sucks. I'm going to be honest, like... I don't, I don't have much more to say. It's just it's just mid as fuck. I mean, that is what it is. I know that might ruffle a couple feathers, and I'm sorry, but, like, that's just it's just the name of the game, man. I knew this video was going to upset some people. It is what it is. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. We have Papa Select, Rosin Tech Labs, Kush Company, Cam, Alien Labs, Blueprint, and Green Dog and Backpack Boys. Green Dog, I've actually decided I'm not going to rank, um, and I want to disclose this. So... I put them on originally. I was going to just disclose the relationship, but I figure this is kind of unfair to even rank to begin with. I part own a brand called Pine Park that is in dispensary shelves in four states as of now. And in California, Green Dog is who we're partnered with to cultivate our flower. They absolutely crush it. I have nothing but great things to say about them, but 
because of that relationship, I don't think it's fair for me to rank them. So I just want to give them a shout out here, and we're going to take them off the list. We're actually going to delete that layer entirely. I don't, I don't think it's fair for me to rank them. So let's do Rosin Tech Labs. Let's go to Rosin Tech Labs. All right. Wait, where the fuck is Rosin Tech Lab? All right. I'm actually extremely blind. They popped up, and I just didn't see it, and I like stopped the whole recording. All right. Either way, Rosin Tech Labs, consistently the most expensive. Consistently. We're talking like $90 grams. These guys are charging like 80 or 90 a gram pre-tax on their rosin. The the hash holes, I'm going to be honest, suck dick. The rosin's not bad. I've smoked some of the rosin. It's good. I'm not going to say it's like, you know, oh, dude, I'm never going to forget this puck. I'm going to go buy this again. I've never bought something from Rosin Tech Labs that I went back and bought twice. I will say that right now. Most of the other brands up here, I'd say B&Up, I've, I've gone back for seconds. Rosin Tech, I bought a fair share of stuff, and I, I've never gone back for seconds. And part of the reason is primarily what I buy from them is hash holes. Is, or I, primarily what I have bought from them is hash holes, I should say. Um, I would, I've tried their concentrate out of curiosity, but it's just so expensive. Usually it was beside better options for cheaper, so I went with those. But their hash holes genuinely suck. I have smoked, I'd say at least probably five or six of them. Uh, I haven't smoked a fuckload because I didn't want to keep lighting my money on fire, but their hash holes just aren't good. Uh, they burned fine, yeah, but like the taste was not good. The high was not there. Kind of similar to what I said about the punch hash holes, the punch rockets, where it feels like they didn't really test the pairing of hash and, and flour before they put it in a joint and sold it, you know? Uh, and the price really knocks this brand down a few notches. I mean... If they were pricing more fairly, you know, if they, if they had like, for example, if Rosin Tech was pricing like Mountain Man, right? We'd be having a more fair conversation, right? Mountain Man, sometimes you can find a really good deal. If Rosin Tech was pricing like Bear Labs, we'd be having a much more different conversation right now. But because they are consistently the most expensive brand on the shelf, I expect consistently the best product on the shelf. And that's not what I get from them. That is not what I get from Rosin Tech. And because of that, we're going to put them, ooh. It's either going to be low D or E because the tax is just so egregious. I'm going to put them in D just because I think it's comparable to Josh Tax. But Josh Tax's products are like slightly better. Um, Rosin Tech just, I don't, I don't know, bro. I don't, I don't know. Listen, redo the hash holes. The rosin's honestly fine. I don't really have anything negative to say about the rosin itself. It's just the price tag, you know? But the hash holes, they need work, bro. They need work. They uh, Go back to the drawing board on those. All right. Next up. We just got a few more here. We just got a few more. All right. Blueprint. Hey, let's talk about Blueprint. Okay. I like Blueprint. I've smoked a good amount of Blueprint before. I like their stuff. It's good. It's good, you know, like it's it's good weed. Blueprint is is very established here in the California market. They're very well known, and I mean they they earned their spot. They're not well known because they're legacy. They're well known because they've been putting out good weed for so long, you know? Really, really a respectable brand. But their stuff is heat. Now I will say, is it my favorite flower in the dispensary? No. Usually it never is. But it is consistently good shit that gets me high, and I've never had a bag of Blueprint that I didn't finish. I've had bags from a few other brands on this list multiple times that I just didn't want to finish. But Blueprint, every time I get a jar, I believe they do jars, not bags, so pardon my language, but every time I get a jar of Blueprint, I'm going to finish it, you know? I, I got love for Blueprint. We're going to put them up here in A. I like Blueprint. All right, next up, Cam. Cam's an interesting one because they have some really good genetics. They have this like private reserve line that's really good. And their smalls are an interesting offering, a very interesting offering. But lately their stuff has not been great. I'm going to be honest. I I'd say probably in the past like three to six months I've noticed their stuff is not hitting the same. For a while, Cam was one of the only brands that I'd actually go to the dispensary and purchase. But... Now, that's not really the case, you know? I, I don't really buy or smoke a lot of cam anymore because their quality just ain't the same. I don't know what it is. Maybe I got a few bags, but this is just my personal take. I, I think the quality has gone a bit under, and because of that, we're going to put cam at B. 
if if their quality had never changed, in my opinion, we'd definitely be talking A or S. But for now, I think B is a comfortable seat for them to sit in. Next up, all right, Alien Labs. Listen up, folks. I love Alien Labs. Their flower is fan-fucking-tastic. I think they have really good carts. Their vape offerings are nice, especially for what they are. But their flower is just good. Like, it's just good fucking weed, man. Uh, their genetics are gas. I think their collabs with Kalia, like I mentioned earlier, are absolutely fantastic. When you get the Alien Lab genetics getting squished by the gang at Kalia, you've got some heat. However, I will say, this is not a brand that I go to the dispo and buy pretty much every time. And the S tier is a brand, like, all the, all the brands in Elite, not S, all the brands in Elite are brands that, like, I'm going to go to the dispo and buy almost every time if I'm at the dispo, or at least... I'm going to consider them and weigh all the options that that brand has. Alien Labs is a brand that is really good. They have good stuff. And for the scale that they operate at, incredibly impressive that they're still doing this kind of quality. Incredibly impressive. Like, these guys do big boy volume, and they still manage to put out some consistently good shit. And for that, I'm going to throw Alien Labs up an S. They really deserve it. They deserve it. Also... I love their brand identity. Look at all the other brands on this list, right? You've got these black and white logos, not to talk shit, a lot of black and white logos, a lot of samey kind of stuff. And then Alien Labs, you know, if you guys have ever seen their merch, like their clothing, for example, it's sick. Their website, their jar designs, their, their branding is really just fucking awesome, dude. Like they have some of the best aesthetic of any brand in the entire country, you know? Big ups to Alien Labs. They deserve S for sure. All right. Kush Company. They, I, don't, I don't even know why I put these guys on here, honestly. I've smoked them quite a few times. Violently forgettable weed. Violently forgettable. I think, once again, we're going D here. It is priced fairly, though. I'll give them that. But it, it's just average. It's not bad weed. It's just average. But it's priced very, very fairly. So I guess D is where they belong. All right. Papa Select. Oh, fuck, dude. Listen. I've had a few good pucks from Papa Select. They tax out the dick, but I will say at least I've had a couple pucks where it was like, damn, that might have been... <coughs> oh! Oh, f oh, bless me right now. Oh, drop a comment and bless me right now. Oh, ble please bless me, dude. Thank you, everybody. All right. Papa Select, I will say that although they do tax really hard like these other brands, I've had a couple pucks from them where I was like, okay, I just got taxed, but I would I would probably pay that again. And because of that, we're going to put them here in C. They do tax, and most of the time, it's not worth it. But every now and then, they do have a really great puck where it's like, yeah, I'll pay 80, I'll pay 90 for that. Like, whatever, it is what it is, you know? They deserve their flowers for that one. And last, but not least, Backpack Boys. Now listen. Kind of like Jungle Boys. They were all the hype like six, seven, eight years ago. They had some really good stuff. Nowadays, they essentially figure out how many different Mylars they can fit Lemon Cherry Gelato into. And that's very disappointing to me. Uh, it makes me sad. Backpack Boys, like they innovated at the time. You know, they, they were pushing all those Gelato cuts, doing the hype Mylars. Really innovative. But they just have not changed at all. Not in any way, shape, or form. They are still doing the same thing that they were doing six or eight years ago. Nothing has changed. And because of that, we're putting Backpack Boys in D. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. There it is. The official dispensary weed brand tier list. Now remember that this is just my opinion. You know, this is not like the, the set in stone official rankings. It's just my take. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comment section below. If you see anything that doesn't belong where you see it, also let me know in the comment section below. But for now, this is my dispensary brand tier list. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed, and let me know in the comments if you want to see the black market brand tier list, because that one's going to get real interesting real quick. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. I'll see you all in the next one. Deuces.